Lesson 78. You guys, are you ready to feel smart? Because Lesson 78 is going to make you feel like a genius. It makes me feel smarter every time I teach it. I can't even handle it. It's called Force Vectors on a Point. Whatever. I don't even know what that means. But there's a cool picture in the book on page 324. And we're just going to dive right into the example because it will make it much easier for you. We're at example 78.1. And look and see the picture they've got there. What they're drawing is a little device with a pulley in the middle. This kind of comes up here. It's like the little metal bracket holding the wheel in place. And then you can see there's like a thickness to this. It's a pulley. And there are ropes coming out of it. What the what? And you'll notice, look at, there's the little bumpy lines on the rope. And then there's one coming out of the other side. So you can see it's like the same rope is going through the pulley. Kind of like on a sailboat or a device that is lifting something maybe. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to consider these. These are force vectors because these ropes are being pulled on. And this is the point at which um, we're looking to see where this piece of rope, the piece that is right down here at kind of this zero no man's land, we're going to be figuring out if this dude pulls on this rope at this angle and this one pulls on this rope at this angle, what will happen to this point here? Where will it move? Now, what's nifty is that if you start to look at the numbers, the way John Saxon has laid this out for us, you'll see that it suddenly starts to look familiar. Don't these look like two triangles that are sitting next to each other that we can use trigonometry to solve? Oh, yes, they do. So the first step in these problems is to redraw redraw the ropey bits as triangles, right triangles, okay? That's going to help us decode this very real-life problem that involves physics and force and mass and weight. It's that kind of a problem that you would do in a physics class, but we're going to just break it down into its mathematical components. So watch how easy this is to do. This is the edge of our triangle. We draw it going up, <clears throat> excuse me, we draw this coming across. The line comes down. That is not very straight, but pretend. 70, 45 degrees is this angle. See? It's a cute little right triangle. And here's our A, and here's our B. And then over here, we can very easily draw another triangle. Chk, 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 chk. 30 degrees. 40, this is our C, and this is our D. So let me just, let me read the whole problem to you just so you can see what they're asking us. Two ropes are attached to a point and pulled on with the directions and magnitudes shown above. So this shows the angle at which the rope is being pulled, and this is a, this is a, a measurement of force. That shows how hard they're pulling. That starts to get confusing because we're because this is a math class and we're not really talking about the physics end of this. But just see, don't worry about understanding the physics of it. Just see, you'll learn that in physics class. Just notice that this translates as the magnitude. This translates as the angle. And for me, I always had no problem seeing the, the angle, how that matched up. So I just knew, well, the other number must be the magnitude if the other one's the angle. So don't worry if you're physics knowledge is a little shaky on this. Again, as Mackenzie can testify, or I guess it was, um, maybe it was Tori, I don't remember. But if you get the math of this, then you'll sort out the rest of it when you get to your physics class, and it'll all be great. So now we just want to rewrite this in polar coordinates. And they want to know what is the resultant force. So they want to give us an answer in polar coordinates. Okay, so we redraw, then two, we figure the rectangular coordinates, and we know how to do that. 
Um, for this one, we know that A will be 70 times the sine of 40 degrees. Sine is always associated with the opposite side. And we know that B, the adjacent side to the angle, will be the magnitude times the cosine of the angle. And let's see, I'm just, make sure you know how to grind these through your calculator, but I'm just going to plop the numbers down here so that you see them. And they're the same, which we would expect, because when you have a 45 degree angle, your sine and your cosine will be the same. Okay, so now we've got those. And then we've got C and D over here. We do the very same thing. We know that D will give us the 40 degrees magnitude times the sine of 30 degrees. And C will be 40 times the cosine of 30 degrees. It's easy to get tangled up in these, you guys. Work carefully. It's really, really annoying. But also, remember, use your um, study, whatever they're called, solutions manual. There you go. That has the step-by-step -step solutions in it. So now we've got these two. Let's see, the value for C is 34.64. And the value for D is 20, right on the dot, OK? So now we've calculated our rectangular coordinates, 3, add, OK? And let's see, we want to add together. Uh, B and C will go together. Right, and that adds to, that will be our right. Oh, we have to get our minuses and pluses in here too. I almost forgot about that. Um, so let's see, A is, remember we're working from the quadrant right here. So imagine it like this. So A is a positive number, B is a negative number. D is a positive number and C is a positive number. Remember, we're imagining, we can imagine our quadrant right in here. Okay, so that's how we know that. Um, so B has the negative, negative 49 and positive 34. And so the sum of those is minus 14.857 to the right, because that's our right. And then A and D are going to be See, I'm trying to draw this. This is a negative. There's my negative sign. There's my arrow. And then when we add these two, it will be 69.497 up. Right? Because A and D are both going up. Okay, beautiful. Now we have found them in rectangular coordinates, but the darn problem wants us to give the answer as a resultant force, what is the resultant force? So we want to translate this back to polar coordinates. Ay, yay, 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 yay. That's how the way they want it. Okay? So we found the answer. Now we just have to rewrite it in terms of angle and magnitude. So, let's draw a picture of what this looks like. So I'm going to write that down as our next step. Draw a picture of our new point. So, here we have it. I like to draw it on my um, We draw it like so. Fourteen point eight six to the negative, so it's over here. So this is fourteen point eight six, 
and then this is straight up 69 point we can round that to 50 that's what the book has done this is our grid by the way this is our um, Cartesian coordinate system so then our point will go up to this corner okay does that make sense that's super confusing you guys this is so complicated we imagine this is our point and we've got negative that was my negative number it looks really messy now negative 14.86 rounded we move that far to the negative right so that's the left and then we had 69.5 up it's a positive number so we go straight up from there and here is our point and there is our hypotenuse to our triangle this is where our right angle is okay now here's where it gets tricky we don't know our angle do we we don't know our magnitude and we don't know our angle so what we have to do is figure out how we can use trig functions to come up with this angle size and here's the nifty way to do it we've got the opposite and we've got the adjacent so if we call this the tangent we're just gonna call this for lack of a better name we're gonna call it theta that's that little swoopy O thing we know that the tangent of theta is equal to Oscar had a hold over Arthur so if we write the opposite 64.50 over the adjacent 14.86 solve that on a calculator we will find that the angle of this is 77.93 inverse trig function on your calculator using this number you can divide that out opposite over adjacent we've got both of those numbers and so we can use that on the calculator to come up with the inverse Using the inverse key, we can find that the tangent of those two numbers indicates that the angle must be 77.93 degrees. All right, so that tells us, um, if this is our answer box, remember we want our answer to fit into this mode with the, with the magnitude here and the angle here we know that this needs to be 77 point this much is 77.93 but remember when we measure our angles we measure this whoa now getting confusing again so we know that 180 would be this whole thing so if we take 180 and we subtract out the 77.93 that will tell us how much this is so 180 Minus 77.93. Do you have a headache yet? 10 minus 3 is 7. 9 minus 9 is 0. Point. 9 minus 7 is 2. And 0 and 1. So that tells us that this angle that we would use to measure our um, measure our angle for this polar coordinate would be 102.07 positive degrees because we're working this way if we wanted to we could write it as negative degrees and come up like that oh my head hurts let's not even think about it all right so now we've filled in this much of our final box and now the last step is to find the hypotenuse we could use trig functions or we could use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That's the way I would go. So we would use um, going back to my steps. We used the inverse tangent to find the angle and then six use a squared plus b squared equals c squared to find hypot and use all right so I'm not going to show the work for that because I'm running out of 
equation, but, or I'm running out of paper. I've got plenty of equations. This could be your a squared, square it, add it to this squared, and then take the square root of the sum, and you would get, you know what you'd get? I'll tell you, 71.07. That's the length of this hypotenuse, which is, again, the magnitude when we're talking about polar coordinates. Holy smokes, you guys, look what we did. Do you not feel smart? We broke down that whole crazy rope problem, and what we found is that if you were pulling like this on a rope, the point that was right here would end up here. That's what those two forces would do for you, is you would end up with your point being up there, which is kind of interesting if you're thinking about like being on a sail or something. And imagine a little piece of tape is on the rope right there, and then you have these two forces pull, and then your little piece of tape would end up up there. So that's what we figured out, which is useful in someone's world, but not necessarily mine. But very cool to think we can do it. Um, when you look at example 78.2, which is what I want you to do next, there's one more little wrinkle, you guys. I'm sorry. This is a really hard lesson. Let me. Sh it's basically the same as this. There's one little difference. And I'll draw you the picture so you can see. What they're saying in this example is that instead of having this rope with two people pulling on it, there's, there's still two forces acting. We, we call this two forces acting because there, there were two different poles. In this one, we're going to say we have two forces. This one is a push, and this one is a pull. Instead of having two poles, we're having a push and a pull. But here's the thing. In physics, a push is the same as a pull. So the first thing that we're going to do is rewrite this as two pulling forces. So imagine two poles here, and now we've got two poles there. All right? That is tricky, but that's how we turn a push into a pull. Because in physics, there's no difference between the two, which is super confusing. All right? From there, I think you can tackle example 78.2. It is kind of tricky. So be sure to talk to me if you run into any problems with that because I don't want you to get bogged down in these. They're super fun, exciting problems when you understand them. They're scary as heck when you don't. So speak up if you are on the scary side of the equation. And I will be glad to help you. It would be my pleasure. All right? Good luck with your ropes and your forces.